Welcome to Get Paid for Your Pad, the definitive show on Airbnb hosting, featuring the best advice on how to maximize profits from your Airbnb listing, as well as real life experiences from Airbnb hosts all over the world. Welcome. We are your hosts, Josefa Kapadia and Jasper Rivers. Get paid for your pad. 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 Welcome everybody to another episode of Get Paid for Your Pad. Today I am here by myself. This is Jasper. Josef, I couldn't make it, but I'm not going to be alone because I have a really interesting guest today, all the way from Buenos Aires in Argentina. I'm talking to Diego. Diego, welcome to the show. Hello, Jasper. Um, hi, everyone. This is Diego. I'm from Buenos Aires, Argentina. And I've been working with Airbnb for two and a half years now. So I don't know. I'm here to share my experience. And Jago has a really, really cool story. We've been talking a lot about how it's difficult sometimes to rent out your apartment on Airbnb if you live in a condominium or if your landlord doesn't like it. Some people rent out their apartments without even contacting the landlord because they're expect expecting that they don't like it. And Jago does it differently. He actually gets the landlords to approve him to rent it out on Airbnb, which is really cool because that's a great solution. So we're going to talk a lot about that. But first, let me ask you, Diego, could you tell us a little bit, how did you get started with Airbnb? Um, uh, yeah, I, I actually made a trip at the middle of my university career uh, to the US, and that's where I first met the sharing economy and all this collaborative consumption movement, and I fell in love with it. So then I, I moved back to Buenos Aires, and... I, I needed a place to stay. I have this. It, it's really hard to rent an apartment uh, in Buenos Aires if you don't have a family member who owns an apartment and is, who is willing to sign the lease with, uh, with you saying that they're responsible and all that stuff. So you have to be creative and get in touch with local owners and can pretty much convince them why they should rent it out to you. And so since 2008, when I first moved to Buenos Aires, I... I've been keeping a database of owners and I pretty much learn how to get in contact with them. And uh, um, I don't know, uh, when I got my apartment here, I, I didn't have a job. So I asked the landlord if he would let me sub rent my apartment from time to time to make ends meet. And he was not very happy, but I mean, he said, yeah, okay, you can do it. So um, for the first months that I didn't have a job here, I just published my apartment at Airbnb and I would go to a friend's house to sleep every other weekend and get, and then help get that money to help me pay for my apartment. Mm -hmm. But soon I, I realized Airbnb was making enough money to pay for its own rent and then also leaving me some profit at the end for the service and value that I added to it. Right. So, so I just figured, well... Just those few weekends. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just uh, for like two weekends, you can pay for, I mean, not everything on, at the apartment, all the expenses, but, but definitely for rent. Mm -hmm. So I, I soon realized that could be my job because I was looking for a job that would let me continue my college education. I was studying engineering back then. So it was uh, really time consuming. I wanted a part-time job that I could like make a living out of it. So I figured that could be my job. So I asked to the landlord if he would let me rent it full time. And we had to work the, the terms for that. He, he wanted me to make sure I was, I mean, I was not gonna trash his apartment or put irresponsible people in, on them. But, but, but he, he, he was very nice because he knew me and I, were, I was living there for a couple of months. So, so he accepted. And th that was like my first apartment and it was pretty much out of luck and, and the landlord accepted. I got another apartment and I was living with the money that was, that was coming from that, that first mm -hmm. apartment at Airbnb. 
So did, but, you, did you have to share the profits from renting out on Airbnb with your landlord or did you just pay him the standard rent? No, he asked me for a little bit more uh, monthly payment. Right. I mean, he said, well, well, if you're not going to leave, you're making a business instead of like 3,000 pesos, it's going to be 3,500 pesos. Right. But, but it was a fixed price. I, I always want to, to make sure it's a fixed price and that I have control mm -hmm. of the apartment because there are some issues that can really change the, the guest's experience. And if you're not... If you're not acting like the owner, you cannot make those changes. For example, if, if I need, uh, if my guest says uh, they, they need a new air conditioner, if you're not the owner or you're not acting like the owner, you cannot just put in your air conditioner. So I, right. I don't, I don't like the old commission based model that, that we used to have here 10 years ago, five years ago before uh, Airbnb was born. Mm -hmm. because because you i mean the reviews then will go to me and i'm the responsible of that great experience so i want to to be able to to make the changes at the apartment when it's necessary right so that well that, that, was, that was just me proving the system and testing it and seeing if it was working when i found out it was working i i i realized i needed to find some other apartments to to manage or to rent through airbnb and I was looking for problems at that time, and I was looking for people that were not happy with their experiences. And that's uh, that's when I when I had one of my like favorite stories with this 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 guy that was not from Buenos Aires. He his name is George. Mm -hmm. He he inherited an apartment in Buenos Aires, and he's he's from like seven hours away. He's in a city called uh, Entre Rios. And he got this apartment in Buenos Aires. He rented out to uh, like the normal way for a two year lease. And he was not lucky. And the tenant used the place as a recording studio. So they didn't take good care of the apartment, but uh, <laughs> there was one issue, especially they created a hole in the wall from in, in the wall that separates the bedroom to the living room mm -hmm. to create right. a window. And, and at, at the end of the lease, he just disappeared and, and George was not happy. He didn't want to rent it anymore because he could not control it. And he wanted to sell the apartment, but the market was not very good for that at the moment. Mm -hmm. And for eight months, he, he kept losing money and he didn't know what to do. And I found, finally got in contact with him. It was not, it was not a conventional, uh, I mean, I was not looking at the newspaper or anything. It was from a friend. He told me about this guy that had this problem with this apartment and we got together and, and I told him, Hey, I can help you. I can take care of the place. Uh, we first have to put things in order. So sol solve this problem, the, the problem, the hole in the wall, for example, and put better furniture. He didn't have the money. So. We, we made an arrangement. I didn't pay rent for the first two months and I would, I was in charge of fixing everything. And then, and then I would just pay him the normal rent for that apartment. Mm -hmm. And he, and he was okay, uh, with the idea of letting me renting out the apartment only if I was, if I was going to take care of that place. Right. So. Uh, actually, what I did was I told him, you can go to this website. He, he doesn't speak English, but I just copied the link from my listing and I said, you can click here in calendar and you will see when it's green, it means it's available. So if you see it's available and you happen to be in the city, just give me a call and I can show you the apartment and you can mm -hmm. see that everything is cool. Because when, when they realize that you're going to take even better care than, than any other person, they, they like it. Right. Because for, for me, I really have, I mean, I, I take better care of those apartments than my own apartment. Because exactly. you cannot have, you, you cannot have any leaks, you cannot have any stains in the wall, because that's going to show up in a review. Yeah. So those apartments have to be really in really good condition. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because when I look at my apartment here in Amsterdam, I've made a lot of improvements since I started renting it out on Airbnb because I don't mind if there's a few loose wires or there's a, there's a light that doesn't work or, you know, like just small issues. I don't really care about it. But I, I want my apartment to be perfect for my guests. So, yeah, actually, one, one of my guests told me, uh, we were discussing about what improvements I could make, and he, he told me something really important. He said, man, you have to think that your guests work for a, 
for a whole year and he and that person took 15 days off mm -hmm. to go visit your country and those are his vacation everything has to be perfect so right. things that you you wouldn't mind your normal life you, you don't want those issues on your exactly. vacation everything has to be perfect so yeah i keep better care of those apartments than, than myself my own so and actually one, one of the cool things that happened to george as well and th this was not planned um the first time he went to he, i mean he came here to visit me in buenos aires he saw the apartment was available and i showed it to him and i asked him hey george do you, have, do you know uh, where you're gonna stay tonight do you have a, a hotel room or something and he said no i was just going to crash at the, cor uh, the hotel in the corner and i say hey why don't you stay at this apartment i mean it's yours <laughs> and you can say free yeah and and he really liked the idea and he visits one of those like two times a year and every time he comes here he calls me and say hey diego is the place available and if it is available i would just block those days for him too mm -hmm. i mean it's it's a win-win scenario for everyone and it, it keeps our relationship strong right that's uh that's, but, that's, that's really cool so he's he stays in his own apartment and then he sees how nicely yeah. you uh, you are treating his apartment, so he must be reassured and not worried. Yeah, I mean, he sleeps at his apartment on my bed, and but like, I mean, I don't charge him. It's it's just for for his peace of mind. Mm -hmm. And for a person that had his apartment trashed once, that thing is really good for him. I mean, yeah. he and it's he interesting well because there. because a lot of landlords are concerned renting out on Airbnb that people are going to trash their apartment. And this is also a concern of any host, you know, a lot of hosts are renting out their own apartments. Now you're renting out somebody else's apartment. So it's the, it's the owner or the landlord that has the concern, right? But yeah, yes, I really believe that if you rent out an Airbnb, it's in your own best interest to keep the apartment in really good state. Cause like you said, people are traveling, they're away from home, they're on their holiday, they want a place that is nice and it's our job as a host to make sure that that their expectations are met yeah so it's, it's kind of the opposite of what you, what you would think and if you if they're if if whatever, whatever they are expecting is not when you when they get here it's going to show up in your review and you're going to lose money at the end of the game because right. of that so mm -hmm. it's in our best interest as well Right, exactly. So just to go back to your story, you started renting out your own place just in the weekends. You realized how much money you were making with it. Then you asked the landlord if you could rent out your apartment full time. Yeah. And then you met George, so you got your second apartment. Mm -hmm. And if I understand correctly, you found a third apartment that you're renting out now. Yeah, because... Uh this is just like relationship I have with with janitors or there's this guy we call the janitor that takes care of the entire building and he knows the owners and he knows when a rent uh, is going to end. And I just try to get, get in touch with those owners to see if they are from here, if they live far away, if they need somebody to take care of his apartment for him. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to get uh, an owner to let you do that. Mm -hmm. I have to talk to like 25 owners to get a yes, but, but I mean, it's just looking for problems and see who can I help and yeah. how can I help that person. Right. And, and just, I mean, you, you don't have to, you don't have to give up, just keep looking and, and find one because right. I, I call, I call a lot of people and they just say no because it's uh -huh. way out of their comfort zone and they don't understand the business. And yeah. I mean, it's cool. It's, it's understandable. But the people that, that you do help there are they are they happy with the arrangement uh, yeah sure i mean george especially because he can stay for free uh, <laughs> but the other guys i mean the the other two apartments i have in palermo they they just don't care they just right. want their their rent every every month and they uh -huh. want no problem and and i don't know i mean they just they just come here every month collect the rent and if the apartment happens to be free on that day i would just uh, in purpose, I would like offer them, hey, do you want a cup of water or something to yeah. like create an excuse so that they would come inside and see the place? And because they always see. I mean, <laughs> they don't they don't say they want to see the place, but every time they come in, they just look yeah. to every other part of the apartment. And Palermo, by the way, is the neighborhood in Buenos Aires where you rent out your apartments, correct? Yeah, yeah, of course. Which is I, a really uh, nice neighborhood. I've been there myself a couple of times. So if you do go to Buenos Aires, I recommend you check it out.
Yeah, that's that's the part the most uh, rented or most looked part at Airbnb. Mm -hmm. If you if you want to buy an apartment here, you should definitely look at, at the numbers in Palermo because mm -hmm. this is like the hot area now. So, Jago, you said it's it's pretty tough to find landlords that want to want you to rent out on Airbnb. Um, you you already mentioned you think it's out of their comfort zone. They don't really understand it. Are, are there any other reasons why? Why those landlords are so hesitant about it? Uh, no, I mean actually they don't. They haven't ever ever heard about Airbnb before. Right. But uh, but you have to explain to them this is the site and it will let me rent it to tourists and they come here for one, two, three, five days and this is what we do and they 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 actually don't want it because there's huge demand for normal let's say in between quotes normal rents so why would they do something different for the same amount of money so you have to be creative and say what can i do to make this work out right. some landlords ask you to pay like six months in advance or 12 months in advance mm -hmm. or it was hard for my the first time i got an apartment here because i, I didn't have anything to prove to that owner that i was going to be able to pay for the rent mm -hmm. So uh, it was hard, and he asked me for some money in advance. But but I mean, it's just every every single situation is different, and you have to get creative. Mm -hmm. I don't right. know. Yeah, and 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 now basically you're renting out free apartments, and you're making a nice living for yourself. Plus, you're you're also at university. Yeah, I mean that's what the whole idea to to get. A, I mean, I was actually looking for a job and I did, couldn't find one, so I ended up creating one for myself mm -hmm. using Airbnb as a tool. Right. I make a living out of it, and I go to college. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm actually in my in my last semester, or so so it, it's been working out, and I I had to thank Airbnb for letting me do that, right? Because otherwise, I would just I could, I couldn't have done it, right? And that's that's a really cool story, and I specifically like. The fact that you're creating a win-win situation for yourself and the owners of the apartments, and um, so that's that's really cool. Now let's yeah. talk a little bit about about um, the 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 problems that you encounter renting out on Airbnb in Argentina. I believe there is it's a little tricky to receive the the money or or. Uh, and actually, right now, a couple of months ago, Airbnb has put uh, a new payment method. They they can just deposit your 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 money in your bank account, but they would put it in our local currency. Right. And we have a exchange problem here with the U.S. dollar specifically, and so most most owners want to to get paid in U.S. dollars, which you cannot if you are an Argentinian resident. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I, I understand that most guests, most, most hosts travel abroad, open a bank account in a, in a foreign country or ask for this Payoneer cards to, to open a virtual bank account and get their money there and mm -hmm. just save it in, in, in a different currency. Right. But yeah, that, that's tricky because at the end of the day, this is a business and you want to make the, the most profit you can. Right. So, so if, 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 if the rates are 60% more, it really moves the your income bar. But yeah, it's tricky. You have to figure it out. And and this is why we have a uh, we have a Facebook group with with local with local Airbnb hosts. We we created that sometime before the actual groups at Airbnb existed mm -hmm. because everything was so new that we needed to to share our stories and see what what, what it was how it was working for, for every other host. But, but yeah, we, we, we share each other. If you are in Buenos Aires and you want to learn about Airbnb, you can, you can look, look for us at Google. Or I also have a website. That it's called tipsairbnb.com. Mm -hmm. It's in Spanish, and that's how I help other people from my area to rent their places through Airbnb. Right, so we'll, uh, we'll put those in the, in the show notes. You have a website where you give tips on Airbnb hosting, and you have a Facebook group specifically for people who are renting out on Airbnb in Buenos Aires, or is it the whole yeah. Argentina? Uh, no, it's the, the, it's the whole Argentina, actually, because we, we have the same laws, so right. everything, everything applies to the entire country. So let's talk a little bit about those laws. Is it legal to rent out on Airbnb in Argentina and in Buenos Aires yeah. in, in particular? Yeah, sure. You can, I mean... 
they, they don't say anything about Airbnb specifically, but you definitely can rent, um, you can rent an apartment or a place to stay for a couple of days if it's for tourism purpose. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so yeah, it's in our legal code and you can do it. It doesn't say if you can do it or not on Airbnb specifically, but yeah, you can. And now in the city of Buenos Aires, there's a new regulation being treated that they want to control these places. So if you have more than three apartments, you have to go online to the local government website and, and ask them for permission. And it's sort of like, a, a, I don't know, they, they want to create a database of who's doing this. So, so they have everything under control, I think. Mm-hmm. Right. But, but, but yeah, it, of course. And it's also legal to sub-rent an apartment. I mean, the thing I do, I, I first had to get in contact with an accountant and with a lawyer. I sat down with them. I asked them what could, that, could, what could we do. And, and yeah, you can do it. I mean, as long as your lease doesn't say you cannot sub-rent it, then you can. Right. And, and please, if any, anybody from Buenos Aires is listening and you're thinking about doing this, go to a lawyer, talk to them. It will be, it will be paid off. I mean, whatever you pay to him, you, you cannot do this thing without, without the formal things because bad things happen. And if they happen, you can have a huge problem mm-hmm. if you don't have your papers in order. Absolutely. That's a great point. Anyone who wants to start and not just in Buenos Aires or Argentina is always a wise thing to do is to find some information, talk to a lawyer, talk to the professionals and, and, and f- get the right information. So, um, so you have a Facebook group. I, I believe you said there's about 170 people or so in there. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I didn't create it. I just joined uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, a lady called Jimena, she created it and it's called Host uh, Airbnb hosts in Buenos Aires. Okay. Yeah. Host host Airbnb Argentina actually. Okay. So so you're talking to a lot of uh, other Airbnb hosts in in the in that group, right? Can you? Yeah. The, can you, I'm the sure there's. Really uh, I'm sure there's some. Let's talk about some good and some bad experiences. I'm sure there's been yeah. plenty <laughs> of those. Yeah. The group is really active. We talk a lot about about everything, about every every questions we have. We share. We even share guests because it's really normal that people come here to Argentina. They stay for a couple of days, and then they go to other parts of the country. And then when they come back, they want to stay at the same place, mm-hmm. which is already booked. So we 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 just pass them to other other right. people we know that they are close and have a good nice apartment. Mm-hmm. We also. One of the good things we do there is uh, I like to organize book buys. So we get together and go and go to the part of the city where they sell like bed linings and that kind of stuff in book for, for cheaper prices. Yep. So that's one of the nice things we do uh, as a group and as a community. We get together, we share experiences. Yeah. And, and I don't know, everybody has its own, his own nice experience at Airbnb. I mean, yeah. I, I have plenty. I have plenty of gifts. This is one really cool thing I, I was not expecting when I started Airbnb. That people, it's like having friends uh, staying over. Mm-hmm. I mean, in their own apartment. But because when they get here, they they usually bring you gifts from their their countries, and and it's really nice. I ended up being friends with not every uh, no probably everyone's in ten in ten guests and ends up being. A nice experience, and, and we ended up being friends. Awesome. So, do you, do you uh, personally check in every single guest into all the free apartments that you do? Uh, no, no, no. Now that I, that like my business has grown, I have my own team. I have uh, I have a person that's in charge of the of covering me when I cannot do because of, uh, actually I'm going to, to the university, so I try to do that. I try to do every check in and check out personally, but I I honestly do it half of the time. Uh-huh. I, I at least try to do at least one for every guest so that they get to know me. Right. And I also leave them a, a phone, a local phone at every apartment with a direct line to my number, so they can contact me. And if they contact me and I'm at school, for example, I would send that person. She's her name is Antonella. She would go and help them out. Mm-hmm. And and then I had to. Because uh, I'm, uh, I like doing the repairs myself, and I did it for the first apartment. But then, uh, when the business started growing, I had to to like 
and get in touch with, with, with other people. And now I have my own maintenance team that's in charge of electrical, gas, and plumbing. I have my cleaning lady, and, and then she got another cleaning lady of her own trust. So I, I created my, my, equip, my team to, to work things out. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I try, I try to, to at least meet every one of my guests and because it's nice. But I don't know. It, it's it's the team that actually creates the great experience. I, I couldn't have done it without without the clean lady. She is awesome, and every other part, every other person in my team, and Tamela also. She's she's great. Awesome, and I I think it's really great that you leave a a, a phone uh, for for all your guests. Do you put like a, a certain amount of credit on the on the phones or? Uh, Oh yeah, yeah. It's really it, it's really cheap to have a local phone, uh, a prepaid phone here in, in Buenos Aires mm-hmm. or Argentina, actually. So every every time my like mom or dad would change their phone, they upgraded like to an iPhone. I I would keep their old phone uh, right. to put that on their apartment. I I bought three prepaid SIM cards, and I would just put the minimum amount of money to keep the line uh, yep. on for for the month which is really cheap and <clears throat> the company offers me one free number so if they call me it's free if they want to order pizza or, ah. or, or taxi they can put money in the sim card as well ah okay so they can call you for free yeah that's really that's really uh that's a really good system yeah yeah they that's give nice you a free na- one free number if they if it's within the same company right that's great that's great so so, yeah, I mean, uh, I have to, I have to tell them to, to put money in it because sometimes they, when well, they ask for a taxi and they run out of credit and then they cannot yeah. tell me. But, but yeah, everything is 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 already written in uh-huh. in the in the welcome board and everything. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you're really on top of your your stuff and you're taking your role as a host very professional, and uh, that's uh, definitely an example for other people's all the people out there. Um, that's thing I wanted to talk about. Have you encountered any problems or any issues with your guests? Because, you know, a lot of the people who are thinking about starting with Airbnb, they tend to have these concerns that the, the guests are going to destroy their stuff or maybe steal something or, or it will cause disturbances mm-hmm. to the neighbors. So can you, tell uh, me, can you tell me a little bit about the, what are the issues that you've had so far as a, as a host? Uh, actually, I've been very lucky. I've had great people every time, so I didn't have any big issues. I mean, the, the one time that a guest broke a glass, he left a five dollar bill rolled into into the broken glass, so that I, when I opened the the cabinet and I saw it, I had like money to go and buy another one. And there was one lady that she was so embarrassed. Uh, the day of the checkout, she 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 called me to so that I could be there in person, and she didn't want to say it at the beginning, but then she said it, and she said I had this tiny problem, and I I, I left a stain on the bed linings because uh, probably she I don't know what what actually it was, but it was a blood stain on the on the bed linings, so she was embarrassed, but she wanted me to 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 have the money for to prepare for another bed lining, so she asked me how much it would cost, and she just paid for it. So, so it's like really, really nice people. And it's funny that you say that you think you've been lucky, but after talking to a lot of hosts, what, what we've experienced is that most people only have positive experiences, really. It seems like the Airbnb community is, is just a, a group of, of people who are very respectful of other people's apartments. And I have the exact same experiences where... You know, somebody, a guest would call me and say, "Oh, something happened. I broke a glass." And, yeah, but they uh, want to know how. They, they want to let me, yeah, let me know how much I need to. I need to pay for it. And I mean, I consider small things like that. I consider it just part of of living in a house, right? I'm not going to charge a guest for breaking a glass. That's just that's just yeah. like normal wear and tear, right? But yeah, yeah people are very uh, generally very apologetic if anything goes wrong of all they they want they want to compensate you uh i think people just respect the fact that you're letting them stay in your house and are and, and generally just treat your your stuff with uh with a lot of respect yeah actually uh i personally rent my apartments or i try to to focus to couples 
because they they're like i don't know in my experience they are they behave better they don't mm -hmm. make any noise because you have party. to be they don't party <laughs> they just i mean it's 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 not it you have to understand the community where you're living actually so i thought about who is living in the building where i have this apartment who are they and and try to put the same the same type of of, of tenants in the in the place so that they would like respect each other if i i know a per, i know a friend that he's renting out at airbnb and it was uh, a building full of uh, elderly people so he's he had problems because they didn't want uh, and strangers on the building every every other day, and because they felt unsafe, mm -hmm. so he had to work things out with them and say, ask to every every other owner and say, hey, can I, what can I do to, to 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 help you out here? And he offered, for example, to pay for this magnetic um, new. There's a new key to the for the entrance of the apartment, and he paid for for the magnetic key, uh, so they have a log of who is getting inside and outside of the apartment. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, not not everything is really is great because sometimes you have these other these other people living in your community that they don't like what you do or they it's not that they don't like but they don't understand it and they don't know what's happening because there's strangers coming in and out. Right. So you have to go to them and and ask them, hey, what is or tell them this is what I do. What can we do to? Are, do you feel uncomfortable? What can we think to? Yep. What can we do? We're thinking it's out. And as any other business, if you like, there's a lot of people in the group. So every, every once in a while, we, we have this, this conversation about something wrong that happened. Probably there's one guy that received a, a person that was a, a that was a alcoholic. So he, he just never answered the, any phone calls or anything. He didn't even leave the apartment for three days. So. I mean, he didn't get anything damaged or destroyed, but the experience was not, not nice. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of any other business. And uh, I think that if I keep growing and I keep getting more apartments, I will have this this type of thing. And it's just part of the business. I mean, right. every every once in, in a long time, you probably have to deal with something and just to have to work it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you have the the right approach. And I'm sure your, your business is going to grow in the future now. We're running out of time here, so Jago, tell us one more time, uh, where can people find you? Oh, sure. If you want to learn about Buenos Aires or you want to, I don't know, learn about my area, you can contact me directly at contact at tipsairbnb.com uh, or go to my website. It's in Spanish and you can hit contact in one of the parts of the website. It's tipsairbnb.com. And I don't know, it goes directly to my smartphone. So. I'm happy to receive any inquiries about about anything you would like to know about Buenos Aires, about Airbnb hosting, or anything. I'm just here to help. Awesome. So we'll we'll put that in our show notes, uh, which you can find at www.getpaidforyourpad.com slash podcast. And we'll also put in a link to your free Airbnb listing. So if anyone's going to Buenos Aires, they can, they can check your, uh, your places out and they know that somebody will be taking care of them yeah thanks guys that was it for this episode jago thank you so much it, i really like your story you've done an amazing job i think um for those who want to have more information about airbnb hosting uh we, you can buy our book on amazon.com it's 997 and it contains everything you need to know about airbnb hosting and also contains a free audio book that you can listen to it comes with the book and lastly if you want to have a, a peek at our book you can also download the prologue the introduction and the first chapter for free at getpaidforyourpad.com all right everybody that was it thanks again jago and we'll see you guys next time get paid for your pet get paid for your pet Get paid for your pet. Get paid for your.